Everything changed when the slaver nation attacked. What used to be a bustling underground utopia of hardworking ants is now a captured dystopia, a place where slaves toil endlessly, feeding and cleaning their oppressors, only to die and be replaced by fresh victims harvested in brutal raids. Imagine Orwell's 1984, but instead of humans, it's ants. Actually, scratch that, it's worse. But let's rewind for a moment before the enslavement, before the carnage, before Polyurgus, the ant equivalent of an evil empire, went full Mad Max. This is a tale about the brutal world of ants, where war and slavery aren't the exception, they're the rules. Picture this. Every day, millions of ants perish in battles you'll never see. Underground empires rise and fall before lunch. And among the chaos, around 50 ant species have evolved to practice slavery. The most extreme division of labor in nature. Yes, slavery. While humans invented laws and unions, ants perfected this cruel trade. Meet Polyergus, the apex slaver ants. They're a sleek four to 10 millimeters of brown to black menace, equipped with sickle-shaped mandibles designed not for building, but for killing. These ants have specialized so much in their trade that they've essentially outsourced living. They don't clean, they don't hunt, and they definitely don't cook. They only raid. In fact, without their slaves, they'd starve to death in their own filth. Polyergus colonies typically consist of a few hundred master ants and thousands of enslaved Formica ants. It's like a really, really dysfunctional corporate office where the interns do everything. But enough about their laziness. Let's dive into their savagery. It begins on a deceptively peaceful summer morning. A Formica colony, home to over 10,000 industrious ants, hums with activity beneath a sunny meadow. Formica ants, the genetic cousins of Polyergus, are diverse. Some are warriors, some farmers, others architects. Humans love them because they hunt pests that destroy forests. They're the overachievers of the ant world. Enter the Scout. A lone Polyergus ant appears briefly, unnoticed, and vanishes just as quickly. But her mission is clear. By early afternoon, she's back at her colony, dancing erratically and spreading pheromones like a demented influencer. The message is simple. Grab your swords, ladies. We're going raiding. Soon, a column of a thousand Polyergus warriors, tight-packed and organized, marches ten meters across the meadow. For an ant, that's like storming the beaches of Normandy. As they arrive at the Formica nest, the attackers waste no time. Dozens begin digging, clearing debris from the entrance. Within minutes, hundreds pour inside. The Formica defenders are valiant, outnumbering the attackers and armed with acid sprays that can melt insect exoskeletons. But here's the thing, they don't fight. Instead, they panic, scatter, and flee. Why? Because Polyergus doesn't just rely on brute force. They unleash a propaganda pheromone, a kind of chemical chaos agent that scrambles the defender's ability to organize. It's like if someone hacked your Wi-Fi mid-crisis. Polyergus attackers are also surprisingly resistant to Formica's acid, so even when the defenders muster some courage, it's usually too late. Mandibles pierce exoskeletons, and the carnage is swift. But here's the kicker. Polyergus doesn't want to wipe out the Formica colony entirely. Why destroy the factory when you can loot it repeatedly? Instead of total annihilation, the attackers focus on the colony's most precious resource, its babies. Hundreds of larvae and pupae, the next generation of Formica, are abducted and carried back to the Polyergus nest. Some are eaten as on-the-go snacks because, you know, war makes you peckish but the rest are destined for a darker fate, slavery. Ants conquered the world over 100 million years ago by being the ultimate team players. Their secret? Chemical communication. Ants know their roles, their friends, and their enemies through pheromones. It's like a social media feed, but way less toxic, well, mostly. Polyergus, however, has taken this to an extreme. Over generations, they've lost many of the genes that make ants good at teamwork. They're terrible communicators, so instead of cooperating, they steal. Once the abducted Formica offspring arrive at the Polyergus colony, they're smothered in their captor's pheromones. It's chemical Stockholm Syndrome. When the Formica ants hatch, they believe they're part of the Polyergus colony. They clean, hunt, and feed their masters without question. 
They even treat free formica ants as enemies, its violent abduction followed by brainwashing. And since formica ants only live a few months, polyergus must raid constantly to replenish their workforce. It's an endless cycle of horror. Here's a paradox. Polyergus workers are so useless that their queens can't start new colonies without slaves. So how do they, you know, colonize? One strategy is as reckless as it is horrifying. During a raid, a young Polyergus queen sneaks into the chaos, locates the Formica queen, and assassinates her. Imagine being in the middle of a robbery and suddenly being decapitated by the getaway driver. If successful, the Polyergus queen takes over the colony, but it's a risky move. Competing slaver colonies often wipe out newcomers. The second strategy is no less terrifying. A lone Polyergus queen infiltrates a distant Formica colony, bulldozing past defenders by releasing appeasement pheromones. Deep inside, she engages the Formica queen in a brutal duel. Equipped with razor-sharp mandibles, the Polyergus queen bites, rips, and tears until her rival is dead. She then performs a grim ritual, licking the dead queen's pheromones to mask herself as the rightful ruler. The Formica workers, overwhelmed by her chemical disguise, begin grooming and feeding her as their new monarch. If the colony has multiple queens, the Polyergus invader must repeat this gruesome process until she's the last one standing. If she succeeds, the colony's enslaved brood will raise her offspring, and a new generation of Polyergus warriors will emerge, ready to perpetuate the cycle. Below our feet, the World War of the Ants rages on, with billions of casualties every day. Polyergus will keep raiding because they must. To stop is to die. It's a bleak reminder that nature doesn't do morality, it does survival. And in this brutal, pheromone-soaked war zone, there's no Geneva Convention, no peace treaties, no mercy. While Polyergus reigns supreme in the horrifying realm of slavery, they aren't the only ants with bizarre and brutal behaviors. Consider the leafcutter ants, nature's industrious gardeners. These ants have an intricate farming system where they cultivate fungus as their primary food source. It's a surprisingly symbiotic relationship and one that shows how far cooperation can take a species. Compared to Polyergus, leafcutters seem almost civilized, although their relentless harvesting can devastate entire forests. Then there are army ants, which are more like a mobile death squad than a colony. With no permanent nest, they swarm through jungles, devouring anything unlucky enough to cross their path. Army ants rely on sheer numbers and ferocity to overwhelm their prey. Unlike Polyergus, they don't enslave, they annihilate. In some ways, their violence is almost refreshing in its honesty. No propaganda pheromones here, just a straightforward massacre. Finally, we have the trap jaw ants, equipped with jaws that snap shut faster than almost any other predatory mechanism in the animal kingdom. These ants don't raid or enslave, they're assassins, using their incredible speed to hunt or defend. Their brutality is surgical, not systemic like polyergus, when we look at Polyergus and its ilk, we're forced to confront some uncomfortable truths about nature. Cooperation and competition are two sides of the same coin. For every species that thrives through teamwork, there's another that survives by exploitation. It's easy to romanticize nature as harmonious, but the reality is far grittier. The World War of the Ants is a stark reminder that survival often comes at a cost. A cost paid in acid sprays, severed mandibles, and stolen lives. So the next time you're out on a sunny day and spot a trail of ants marching along, remember, beneath the surface, a dystopian nightmare is unfolding, and Polyergus is leading the charge, proving that even in the insect world, power corrupts absolutely. If this narrative resonated with you, do support us. Hit that like button, drop a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe. Thank you for staying with us to the end. See you in the next video on Plaid Chronicles.